you got to always get back in transition defense. That was a transition three from Marisa, but Anna Camden with the pretty spin move inside for the second effort. Hagen's nearly traveled. That's what Lisa Bluter thought anyway. And Burke, who's been cold lately from beyond the arc, Megan, with a big shot there to put Penn State up five. Warnock open for three. Got it. Warnock, one of the most lethal players in the Big Ten from beyond the arc. Not only Iowa, but Penn State as well. They did the same thing for really continuing to make this a priority even in these strange circumstances. Garcia had to launch that one before the shot clock expired. I don't know if she called glass, but it counts. Handling adversity has been one area in which Carolyn Teeger wants to see this team improve. Been in double figures five of her last six, and again, is just one point away from making that six out of seven. Caitlin Clark got to get her going. She's got six. Off the miss, McKenna Warnock has the rebound. Clark with a long pass up to Marshall. How about the vision for Clark and Marshall makes it count. Burke hits that triple, but it's because Beverly took a triple in through the defense. Burke is even more open now to knock that down. So another 8-0 run for Penn State here that Clark silences. Sitting with two fouls now. And Iowa trying to make this a single-digit ball game. Martin blocked by Burke. Burke a defensive force, Megan. Here's Beverly the other way for the layup. Remember, coming off a scoreless game her last time out against Michigan State, she's 5 for 10 from the floor, all three pointers. And there's a big answer from the junior, Tony Taiwo. But look at the pinpoint passing for Penn State here in the half-court offense. Putting on a clinic right now. Beverly launches and hits. It just feels like anyone can knock down a shot on the floor. Originally did not tell us who that specific player or former player is that is battling cancer. Good start for Kate Martin in the Hawkeyes, but she wanted to quit with Randy first, and again, just always keeping her players current and former top of mind, and Penn State with the answer from three-point range, courtesy of Shea Higgins. Iowa wants to continue trying to create those second-chance opportunities, but when they can get out and run in transition, this is where Iowa's really successful. Warnock sets her feet, splash. Beverly, count it. Naya Beverly with a big shot for Penn State. No team in college basketball has more freshmen than Penn State on its roster. Sonano with a bucket and a foul. Kate Martin wide open for three. You can't give Iowa looks like that. Beverly, the senior point guard on this freshman laden roster, finds Cash, the SMU transfer, who splits the lane and lays it in. In the corner, Martin. Big time three pointer, and it's a two point game. Right as Iowa is on the precipice of taking this game over, Caitlin Clark does it. Clark to the open, Gabby Marshall. 4-3. She's on a team with a lot of other four and five star recruits. She's not asked to do quite as much, I don't think, as Caitlin Clark is. Responding to adversity there to make it a six point ball game. Cash, eight points. She's battled foul trouble today. She's got three. Martin in the corner, gorgeous shot. Penn State scored 52 points in the first half. Caitlin Clark got to her spot. No one better. Ten has not always gotten the national recognition we think it deserves in terms of volume in the NCAA tournament as Beverly picks up the bucket and draws the foul. And that was the fourth foul called on John Asia Cash. Clark, corner pocket. Doesn't matter. She can be open, covered, feet set, on the dribble. However, not quite as fast as Penn State was showing in the first half. Kate Martin has been the player of the half for Iowa. Warnock blocked by Cash. Ball gobbled up by Sonano for Iowa. Clark. Oh my gosh. 32. Final five seconds or so. 
of this game with her eighth 30-point performance in the bag. Megan, just saying, Kelsey Mitchell, remember her? She had seven 30-point games as a freshman.